Beginnings, and I'm Elle, and I'm here with Sherry, who is a beautiful spiritual warrior, who is a life coach, a yoga teacher, who does breath work. She's magnificent. Thank you. Oh, How are you? Thank you. <laughs> now, you know what? If you could tell us a little bit about when it all started. When did you start doing yoga? I started doing yoga as a little girl in my great-grandma's living room with my great-grandmother. My great grandma learned yoga from her sister in law who came here from Japan. Wow. Yeah. During World War II. That must be wow. Yeah. I can't even imagine. I did not even know I was doing yoga. We were stretching and holding the stretches and breathing and what an incredible that's, memory. Yeah. That's all that I thought Fabulous. I was doing. Stretching. It was a But you were doing it together. We were doing it together and I was learning from her and and I was enjoying it as a child. And I did not know I was doing yoga until I became a teenager. And I wanted to learn what yoga was. And when I went out and I found books and videos, because I am from the Midwest, there was no yoga studios back there. I went and got the books and the videos and I started watching the video and I'm like, wait a second, this is what I was doing with my great grandma as a child. Now you've worked with many masters. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So tell us about some of the different styles and techniques because there are thousands of types of yoga. Uh, there are a lot of types of yoga. So a few of the types of yoga that I have learned was Sundu yoga. It is a form of yoga that comes from Korea. So just to let you guys know, we are outside and it's raining. So it, there, there's a very powerful energy going on and we're mercury in retrograde. So um, it, it's like the universe is it's going through a cleansing and it's, it's exquisite. So um, we got to make sure we speak up so you can hear us through the uh, beautiful sounds of the raindrops. It is a great sound in the background. It is. Yes. So where were we? We were talking about the different types of yoga. Oh, the different yes. types of yoga. So Sandu yoga comes from Korea. It's a form of yoga. In that form of yoga, you are learning more about your breath and learning more about um getting unstagnant energy unblocked in your body and doing it on your own. So I, so important. So important. So I would be with this guy for an hour at a time and I would be in one yoga pose that whole time. Wow. Breathing that whole time. You know, it, it, it's really teaching you um, discipline. Yeah. 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 To know uh, breath work. Breath work is, is how you feel. So if you're shallow breath, you could feel anxious, you could that you feel nervous. So your breath and how you breathe is more important than you realize. Mm -hmm. Very important. We cannot survive without air, but the air can continue going on without us. So it's important to really love that air and honor that air and take in as much of it. It's our life force, it's the first thing we do when we are born, and the last thing we do when we leave this planet. So we're going to show you a technique in a moment, but I want you to really understand, um, I guess, the Korean style because it's, it's, yes. it's unique. So it is. it was about holding that pose. Um, it was not challenging poses that we did in the Sundu Yoga either. It was very easy poses, um, but learning to connect with our breath and really feeling our breath. This other part was, was learning to unblock blocked energy, our chi and that was tapping on our body. We would tap all over our body. Not too hard, you're, you're not beating yourself up physically. You're just tapping, tapping. So you're cleansing and clearing your meridians. The cleansing and clearing your meridians. So you're going up your body, you're doing it in your chest. When I got here into my chest, now I speak things and make things my own. Um, I learned another form of breath work from another amazing teacher, her name is Donna Amber. And she did a screen therapy with me that really helped me also release stuff that was stuck. So when I get here to my chest with people, I ask them to inhale and exhale out a loud sigh three times. So you go like, 
Ah. Ah. Getting that out, yes. I, you know what, I, when you go through fear or you go through somebody yelling at you or there's different things that happen in your life and you shut down. So doing this is a way of opening and, and releasing some of the chakras or the, some of the energies that have been shut down. Yes. And then, um, so we tap over all of the chakras as well, tapping up to our throats. This is our throat chakra. Speak your truth, to be able to speak your words going to our mouth to remember the words that we use have power and to be gentle with our words and only speak the truth, speak love. Is it necessary to be heard? Um, don't say things that's gonna hurt somebody. Tapping our eyes because there are miracles every single day that are happening around us that we are just not aware of. Some people are wearing the blinders, so awakening those eyes to see those blessings that's happening tapping on our third eye to realize that there are things happening that we don't completely understand, but it's real. And accept it. Tapping on your crown chakra to connect you higher to your star chakra to connect you to source. Um, there was a 777 breath technique that was taught to me. I teach this breath technique in each one of my classes also. It's really good for anxiety. It brings you back into your body. You inhale to the count of seven. You exhale to the count of seven. And then you hold your breath to the count of seven. And we're going to experience that right now, aren't we? Yes. So I hope you guys are in the mood to learn and experience a technique that you can use, utilize in some time in your life. Whether you do it once a week, twice a week, whenever you feel like, it's just a beautiful thing to do. It really is. And you can do it anytime. It takes like, what, maybe less than five minutes. You can do it anywhere. So we're Let's all do it. To Let's do it with a nice, comfortable position. Nice, straight spine. Close your eyes. And begin to inhale slowly, counting to seven. Exhaling slowly to the count of seven. Holding your breath to a slow count of seven. Inhale to the count of seven. Exhale to the count of seven. Hold to the count of seven. Inhale to the count of seven. Exhale to the count of seven. Hold to the count of seven. Inhale to the count of seven. Exhale to the count of seven. Hold to the count of seven. Inhale to the count of seven. Exhale to the count of seven. Hold to seven. Inhale, seven. Exhale, seven. Hold, seven. And then go to your normal breath. Wow, I feel like I'm floating. It is so wonderful. It really is. Yeah. And it also um, ignites your organs. Yes. You know, it, it, it's very healing for the body. It helps to cleanse your mind from all the, the monkey, um, chatter, monkey mind. There you go. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That are not necessary. Yeah, we do get caught up in that. Yes, we do. No, we should not. No. Yeah, and this is a great way of cleansing and clearing that, especially if you can't sleep at night. It's a beautiful way of bringing yourself to an elevated place. Yeah. It's a, it's a great breath technique. Now, most people don't know some of the challenges that you've gone through. I mean, there is more yoga to come. We're going to share with you. But before she got into the other levels and beautiful aspects of yoga, she went through different periods of your life that really affected your beingness, which is why yoga is so important to you and young moms are so important to you. So I, I think it's great for everybody to understand you on a deeper level. So I myself was a young mom. Um, starting there, 
I had my daughter when I was 19 years old. I got pregnant when I was 19, had her when I was 20. Mm, but even before that, I mean, mean, let's go back. Let's go way back. Going way, way back. <laughs> my first, my first traumatic experience, experience in life, my first one was, it's about 10 months old, and 10 months and a year old. I remember this. And wow. well, I remember because through meditation? My, through meditation, through my mother, talking to her, asking her exactly what was this. And I was with a babysitter and the babysitter locked me in a potato cellar for hours. And my mom and father came and they found me. They wanted to know where I was. And there I was in a potato cellar and I was no longer crying. I was unresponsive. Um, I was full of vomit and dirt. Oh my God. That was my first uh, feelings of abandonment, neglect, not being loved, not being wanted. So it doesn't always have to come from a family member. No. This was a complete stranger, and it is so important who we leave our children with. Very important to leave yeah. our children with. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Well, it's helped me become who I am today. Yes, it is. So those feelings of abandonment and unloved and all of that left me searching for love and acceptance and feeling out of place and like an alien for a very long time throughout my youth. I was bullied. I'm tiny. I come from a small town. And when you're bullied, you get angry, more angry, and then you lash out. And I became a bully myself. And I'm sorry to everybody that I have hurt. From that, I was trying to find numbing devices because I was hurt and I was also sexually abused and I was promiscuous and started experimenting with drugs and alcohol. And Which a lot of people can identify. Yes. Whether it's themselves or it's a family member or someone they know very dear to them, that you use those different vices to either escape or to try to feel better or to, to numb. I you know? numb yes. Yeah and trying to fit in also. Which is another thing that people can totally identify with. So and it almost took my life. I had an overdose from these drugs and alcohol one night. How old were you then? I was 14. Wow. And I died. I had a, an experience. And What do you remember most from that? The experience from when I died was I saw my I was like up here and my body and the doctors and paramedics and my parents and my grandparents were all down here and I could hear and see everything that was going on mm -hmm. in the room. Like the movie Ghost in a sense. In a sense, yes. And then I came out of it for almost 24 hours. They did the thing to, paddle. this paddle thing to bring me back. They sent me home because I was drugged drug and teenager at the hospital really didn't want to keep me. They sent me home. And when I went home, I was in my bed and my father and my cousin was upstairs talking with me and I felt this pain in my spine and my whole body started to twist and turn and I became contractured and they had to take me to the hospital again. And at that point, I had another death experience. They had to bring me back. But now my mind, I, my body would move, my mouth would speak. Nobody could understand what I was saying, mm. and I was like that for a month. I could I could walk, but I couldn't feed myself. I had no perception of where my mouth was. I needed help feeding mm. myself. The month went by while I was in the hospital. Apparently, I have no memory of this time of my life up until the very last night. Um, the churches in my neighborhood got together and in my community and had a big prayer for me. My parents were putting me in a home for people with disabilities. So they were not planning on bringing me home the next day. I was going to live in a state facility. Oh my God, now this, you were living in the middle of the, in the country. I was living in Illinois at the time, yeah, in the Midwest. And um, that next morning I woke up and I knew who I was and I knew what happened to me. I knew my mother's phone number and I was able to call her. Um, what I remember from the night before is a woman came into my room and prayed with me. And nobody knows who this woman was. An angel. An angel. Yeah. yeah. And all this little girl really needed was love. Yes. And so this person love. took the time to give you love, make you feel loved and connected, 
which brought you back, which is what a blessing. It did. Yeah. And then after that experience, I got released from the hospital and I was very curious more about yoga, about meditation, about natural medicine, about Qigong and Tai Chi, um, so many different things. And being from the Midwest, there was not very many of these things available. Uh, none of these things available, except for going to, at the time, it was... Video store. Yeah, video store, the bookstore, and that's where I went. That's where I got my books about yoga. And that's when I re-remembered that that's what my great-grandma was teaching me when I was a child. The teacher was very comforting. Very comforting. Thank you. And, and thank you. <laughs> yeah. So every time I'm teaching a yoga class, I think of my grandma and remember my grandma. How beautiful. Yes. I am so sorry. My gosh. Now, when you came to New York is when you started to meet some of your masters. So when I came to New York, I moved out here. I was a massage therapist back in Illinois. I thought I was going to get to come out here and do my massage therapy and help people out here. And I learned more alternative therapies when I was in school for massage therapy. I went to the Chicago School of Massage Therapy. I also went to a school that no longer exists called Sawyer College in Maryville, Indiana for massage therapy. I moved here, my degree did not transfer with me, and I had two more kids after I moved here. Then I went back into a dark place again. I went through postpartum depression because I didn't have a community. I had no family, I had no friends, and I was alone. And it's scary. Is that when the women's circles came into the picture? That's when I started doing yoga. Ah. I started going out, becoming a wandering yogi, taking okay. random yoga classes with different teachers out here, learning the Sandhu yoga, learning Hatha yoga, learning Kundalini yoga, learning some Tai Chi, learning acro. acro yoga. I started going to women's circles. I started going to drumming circles. I went on a retreat to Puerto Rico and released so much in Puerto Rico. And I'm so thankful for my teachers and mentors that were in Puerto Rico with me. I was afraid of a spider and I am no longer afraid of spiders or even cockroaches. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, I, I went out there and I found pieces of myself that um, I, I love about myself now. So I'm still out through here. all the different, um, incredible experiences that I, I don't wish on anybody, but thank God you, you've come through so much and, and now you, you want to help other young people. I want to help other young people, yes. I am non-judgmental because I've been there, I've gone through it, I get it, I understand it. I am compassionate because again, I've been through these things. And I just gave you a blip of my life. There's so many more details to the story that we create. Which we all have uh, our ups and downs and all around. Maybe not two near death experiences, but, but things that have created the post traumatic stress or, or mm -hmm. fears or things that shut us down. Yes. You know, and it, it could be something as silly as a grandma going, that you know because you don't want you to burn yourself yeah. but yet you know no matter what a trauma is a, is a trauma to each individual you know yes. so it's, it's not belittling anybody to something as as incredible as your story is to somebody else and so everybody's story everybody matters everybody matters but what is, is incredible is that you are a young mom yes and now you're looking to empower other young moms the children are our future. Yes, they are. They are our future. And yes, I was a young mom, and now I have a blessing coming into my life. My daughter is pregnant, and I am. She is going to be a young mom, making me a young grandmother. She gave me purpose once, and she's giving me purpose again. And I want can you believe this young lady is a grandma? Oh my god! I mean, I'm a grandma. Okay, I can get it. But this little princess, forget it. She looks like she's 19 herself, and that's. The essence of, of living healthy and breathing and yoga can do to you, it rejuvenates you. It it enhances all the different aspects of, of who you are. Mm -hmm. Your skin, your hair, your not your body, your strength. It's, it's the yoga, it's the breath, it's the drinking the water. But most of all what it is, is you learning to love yourself. There and you realize go. that you are enough and that you 
do matter. That's right. And that we are all perfectly imperfect, divine just the way we are. Absolutely. And so, how can I put it? We're, we're all working towards the same thing, which is not working. We're evolving to be the best aspect of ourselves. And through meditation, it, it's a, um, with yoga, which is also a form of meditation, yes. you're able to cleanse your mind, you're able to tune into yourself and, and honor what you're feeling and, and where you are. And I love this. Yeah. yeah. It's, beautiful process. It really is a beautiful process. And um, so what I'm hoping to do is I want to work with young moms and make them feel like they have a community, place to go to. Yes. Support uh, somebody that's going to listen to them. Creating, did I say this already, the village. Create, there's an old cliche. It says it takes a village to raise a child. And in today's world, we've lost that. We've become competitive and we forgot that's about right. our neighbor's kids. That's we don't right. care if our neighbor's kids have something to eat or not. We're going to judge them. And tell our children, oh, you can't be around them because their parents are this or whatever. We need to stop this. Yes. And we need to bring back that community and bring back love and support right. for one another. So I want to work with these young moms to teach these young moms not to compete with each other. Not to compare themselves to one another. And to support one another. To embrace each to other. To embrace each other. Yes to help each other with babysitting because why in the world are we paying $15 an hour for a babysitter? <laughs> well, I guess because we don't want somebody locking our kid in the potato cellar, right? That's really so I, I do get it, you know, but when you have a young mom struggling, they can't, they can't afford these things. That's right. That's right. And I have a daughter with a little, little love and I have two grandsons. And, and it's a magical thing, these children. They are. They're, they're these little beautiful little indigos that are just they so are. brilliant and so bright. And um, we want to make sure that we nurture them. So we have a, a positive tomorrow. Yes. And as they I, are tomorrow. That's right. And, and teach them natural ways of doing things like you are with the essential oils and the things to, to heal the body and to make the hair grow. Those. Tell us about some of the things that you're doing with that. So I use essential oils and I like to make what I call my little potions. I put my essential oils in argan oil and raw shea butter. Um, I'd love to teach people how to do this. Uh, and it's good for, I, I make my own hair growing serum. I get subria dermatitis sometimes. It's like a form of dandruff when you're overly stressed or in the winter and sure. your skin's dry. So I created my own hair stuff that I put in my hair. And your um, hair is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. For my yeah. skin, I like to use my argon oil and frankincense. You know, I just mix my things, using things naturally. And, and instead of using lotions that have tons of chemicals in it or petroleum and all of these different things that are really not good for our skin. So, right. yeah, it's learning about the things that touch your body and what you breathe in really matters. So it's learning about... Um, the things that we use every day that affect how we feel. So there, there are a lot of different chemicals in the things, formaldehyde, um, toxins that create a lot of the health issues that we have. And the more that you know, the more you can prevent or restore your body. Now, the other thing that we didn't see, talk about that I would love to talk about is the acro yoga. Acro yoga. Oh my God, it's acro so yoga. cool. <laughs> Acro yoga is so much fun. It brings playfulness to adults, community, connection, teamwork. What acro yoga is, is there are at least two people together. You should also have a third person, a spotter. There is a base and there is a flyer. The base holds the flyer up in various yoga poses. It's and kind of like the way you used to hold the baby, right? Yes. So when we were playing with ba our babies when they were little and we would put them on our shins and we would lift them up on our shins and let them fly and play with them, we take this a step further and we put people on our feet and lift our feet and take them higher and let them feel this feeling of freedom, of flying, of having to trust the person that they're balancing on and communicating with the person they're balancing on. And feeling supported. And feeling supported. It's a, it's a fabulous thing. It is such a great, it's, to me, I love it. It's so much fun. It's great for parents to do with their kids. This is another way to connect with your kids because after our kids 
our babies and toddlers, they become these little aliens and we don't know how to interact with them anymore. <laughs> you know, so this is a great way to play with them again and keep yourself connected. And, and it's, it's strengthening as well. It is strengthening. You need to be strong. But listen, people, anybody can do acro yoga. Don't think that you have to be a certain body type. Or, oh, I can't do this because I'm not that. Anybody can do it. Believe in yourself. You That's can do right. anything. Yeah. So you've come a long way and yes. all the different experiences. You create a three-step program that you guys can experience. And we're going to let you know how to connect to Sherry and find Sherry so she can do one-on-ones with you. Or you can experience her yoga classes that are fantastic. Now she's going to have one over at the Beach Club by us on Long Island and in Ronkonkoma, the Beach Club Estates. But now you can also catch her in Port Jeff. Yes, I am in Port Jeff at Satya Yoga and Pilates. It's on 347, and I teach at uh, 1045 Saturday mornings, every Saturday. I hope to see some of you. Oh, absolutely. Now, the three-step process is where she integrates um, the life coaching, the breath work, the posturing with yoga, and it, it, it's very empowering. It's very empowering. Yeah. It's, everybody is different, so there's no one three-step process that's exactly the same for the next person. It's very individualized. It's very individualized. What your strengths and what your abilities are and where you are. And where your trauma is stuck in your body, too. Yes. Going back to our tapping, some people may have weak knees. Right. So, and yet another person may be having lower back issues or even shoulder issues. So, I mean, the more you understand spirituality, you realize that everything that you're feeling comes from an emotion. Mm -hmm. And with yoga and with breath work, you're able to go through um, an awakening, an understanding, uh, almost like a rebirthing, because you're able to see things from a whole set of eyes that when you're in this meditative state, it's like, oh my God, I remember now, you know? And, and as you're going through this um, beautiful process, you're able to um, shift things, free yourself. Yourself, love yourself, yes. Learn that you are perfect the way you are. Absolutely. Enough. Yes. Now, how do we find you on Facebook? Sherry, S H E R R I R O U B I S. Yes. So you can be updated on where to find her and all the fabulous things that are to come. So thank you for joining us. Namaste. And until next time, much love from the Age of Beginnings. Thank you. Then we go over here to our throat and we gently tap our throat chakra to awaken this throat chakra to help us speak our truth. After we're awakening the throat chakra, we're going to the face, we're awakening the facial muscles. Then we go over here to our mouth and I tap my mouth and I tell people to tap their mouth because the words we speak are powerful and we can't always take back what we say. That's why breath again is also important. Take a breath before you speak. So what you say is your truth because our words can be very powerful. We can help somebody with our words or we can really hurt somebody with our words. So tapping here to remember that our truth is important to speak, but be kind with our words at the same time. And we go over to continuing to tapping our face, our nose, and I ask people to tap their eyes because sometimes there are miracles and blessings happening around us all the time but we don't see them, we are blind to them, we are living with our blinders on and we can't see the beautiful, amazing things that are already happening in our lives. So to awaken our eyes and to see these blessings and miracles, then we go on to tapping our third eye, to awaken this third eye and to also remind ourselves that there are things in this world that we can't see and they're sometimes hard to understand, but it's real.